After putting some inanimate objects in front of me to smash, Plasmus was confident enough in my abilities to immediately pit me against a hulking giant of a boss, the Warden of the Silent Sorrow. I carefully chipped away at him using swift dashes and dodges until the boss finally collapsed in defeat. As I watched, my silent protagonist, the Penitent One, filled his helmet with the blood streaming out of the corpse before jamming it back on his head in a gory display. Yeah, it's that kind of game. Because it is an act of penitence. As the name suggests, Blasphemous doesn't shy away from its dark ideas. It's vicious and full of disturbing enemies and more demented religious iconography than you can shake a rosary at. The now corrupted world is brought to life with some truly gorgeous pixel art. From the fluidity of its character animation to the close-up cutscenes that would look at home in a classic LucasArts adventure game, even in pixelated form, enemies are varied and disturbing. There's even this gigantic thing with a giggling woman sitting on its head, or maybe that is the head. I don't know, but the point is, Blasphemous is creepy, okay? What equally caught my eye was the somber and haunting backdrops I found exploring Blasphemous' unholy world. Whether escaping ruins overflowing with corpses, or navigating crumbling roads illuminated by a dying sunset, it made me want to know more about what happened here. Compared to other 2D platformers, Blasphemous is more about careful attacks and looking for openings, with the added benefit of expertly timed parries that often let you retaliate with even bigger attacks. While areas are fairly sparse with basic enemies at the start, it wasn't long before I was forced to figure out how to avoid danger and traps from all directions. I also gained a new appreciation for spacing and positioning, as getting caught in a corner spelled doom if I wasn't careful. More than a few ideas here might have you thinking of From Software's games, and though I don't throw out these comparisons lightly, I was extremely pleased to see Blasphemous include one thing that many Souls-like games completely ignore, lore. Blasphemous has no problem setting the stage early on. You will guide the Penitent One to the Cradle of Affliction, which is blocked by a massive door that requires three relics guarded by different bosses across the land. As you explore, you'll find an assortment of items, trinkets, and collectibles. All of these things are filled with tidbits of lore about this world. It's the devil in these details and the environmental storytelling that has me excited to answer the many questions Blasphemous poses. And if you aren't big on piecing together a story, there's nothing to stop you from carving a bloody path to the bosses of Blasphemous. My demo area ended with one such boss, and the imposing behemoth looked like it might have walked straight out of From Software's Bloodborne. I really enjoyed how both bosses erupted from the background art to amplify the drama of their introductions. This creature's rampaging offense was evenly spaced, but still required me to react quickly to take advantage of his openings without getting too greedy. In just over an hour, I felt like I had learned so much, yet so little of the cursed world of Blasphemous, and I'm dying to know where the path of the Penitent One leads. If the moody and foreboding atmosphere is any indication, I get the feeling I've only scratched the surface of the horrors that await me down this unholy road. For more on Blasphemous, be sure to check out the opening minutes as well as one of the boss fights, and for everything else, stick with IGN.